Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about the weight loss surgery for reversal of diabetes type 2. So uh, we'll start with what is bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is basically a weight loss surgery in which we either cut the stomach to a smaller size or we bypass the stomach and the first and second part of the intestines. So which are respectively called a restrictive procedure and a malabsorptive with restrictive procedure. So in restrictive procedures, we have laparoscopic banding, which we nowadays rarely do. And the other restrictive procedure is called a sleeve gastrectomy, which is done laparoscopically and it has good results. So I normally propagate a sleeve gastrectomy. The other is a combination of a malabsorptive procedure where the absorption through the intestine decreases plus there is restriction of food so it is a gastric bypass surgery which we normally in medical terminology will call it roux and y gastric bypass of late we have started doing a mini gastric bypass where we make a loop of intestine and attach it to the stomach so it is a combination of both of them nowadays what has happened is bariatric surgery is also called a metabolic surgery. What happened over a period of time is, when we started doing bariatric surgery, the diabetic patients, their diabetes started improving or disappearing altogether. First of all, we'll have to understand who are the candidates for bariatric surgery. For a candidate to be undergoing a bariatric surgery, what is the most common thing and which is the simplest of things is to calculate his body mass index, which is commonly called BMI. So patients who have a BMI of 32.5 plus comorbidities, may it be hypertension, may it be diabetes, may it be arthritis, may it be sleep apnea. A patient who has a BMI of 32.5 plus two comorbidities are actually candidates for bariatric surgery or their BMI is 37.5 with no comorbidity, these become the candidates for bariatric surgery. Now in past few years, once the metabolic surgery came in, the indications have actually expanded. The indications have expanded to patients who are say BMI of 30 to 35, and they have uncontrolled sugars. So these patients have become candidates for surgery because they have failed after intensive medical therapy to control the blood sugars. Their HbA1c is high. So the next category we is patients who have BMI of 35 to 40 and they have partially controlled diabetes mellitus but it is not fully controlled and patients who have a BMI of 40 plus even if they have well controlled diabetes on medicines are candidates because diabetes in such patients can be completely reversed. What are the complications of bariatric surgery? The most common thing after bariatric surgery is deficiencies of vitamins. We are deficient in vitamins because the amount of food which we are eating is less. So we will need to supplement the vitamins. Then we eat less of calcium because we are eating less food and less trace elements. So these need to be replaced. Other complications can be categorized into immediate, post-operative and late complications. The immediate post-operative is related to the surgery. There can be a leak from the anastomotic site. The sleeve can become tighter or the gastrojejunostomy can leak. So these are immediate concerns after the surgery. That is why we keep these patients on a liquid diet for about three weeks till the process of healing takes place. Thereafter, they are allowed to eat semi-solids and solid food. Late complications are at times there is a stricture at the anastomotic site. The patients can form ulcers at the anastomotic site, which can 
most of the times be treated with medication. Rarely patients can develop what we call as a dumping syndrome if they eat too much of carbohydrates immediately they will start perspiring but these can be taken care of very easily with our dietary needs and dietary restrictions which we put on the patients. If patients follow them they will rarely have such complications. I would like to conclude in the end that bariatric surgery has come a long way. Though we started it in 2004 when we did our first bariatric surgery conference in India, it has come a long way. The procedures have become standardized, the results have become standardized and now we have started doing metabolic surgery, learning from our bariatric surgery experience. So patients, we can actually reverse maybe for three years, four years, five years, the type 2 diabetes, patients do not require medication, may it be tablets, may it be IV medication, insulin therapies, we don't need them, patients do well without medication. The cardiovascular diseases, the incidence has gone down, the risk of cancers have gone down, so there is now a treatment for metabolic syndrome. The blood pressure comes back to normal without medication. So it has increased the indications of bariatric and metabolic surgery in the recent past.